So let's get started with an introduction to OpenCL. So I want to start off with a disclaimer here. I did work for Apple. I worked for Apple when we developed the first version of OpenCL. So that means I'm undoubtedly biased. But I think you'll see as we go through this presentation, it's not in the way you might think. But do keep that in mind when listening to what I have to say about OpenCL. So what is OpenCL? Well, OpenCL is a low-level language for high-performance, heterogeneous data parallel computation. So let's break that down into what it means. So it's low-level, high-performance. Low-level means that it's not going to do a lot of details for you. You have to handle stuff yourself. High-performance means you can get really good performance if your code is matched to the hardware. Heterogeneous, it supports multiple types of devices. So currently today, you can compile OpenCL code, the same code, and run it on CPUs, GPUs, and even FPGAs. Data parallel, well, this is one particular type of parallelism, and it's OpenCL is best at just because that's what GPUs are set for. So the benefits of OpenCL, it gives you access to all the devices in your system, CPUs, GPUs, you can get accelerators. It used to work on the cell processor, but they don't really exist anymore, but you could do it on FPGAs now if you really wanted to. It's based on C99, so the programming language is very familiar to C, but this is also bad because C99 is not a very great programming language. It's not very user-friendly. And it's portable across devices. And this is really the big thing about OpenCL. So if you're going to run on a whole bunch of devices from different vendors, you need to make sure things are portable. So OpenCL gives you a consistent way to express vectors, so you don't have to deal with different manufacturers' ways of doing SIMD. And it has math libraries that are shared across all, all different devices. Sharing the math libraries is really important because it means you can count on the same functions everywhere. And the OpenCL certification process gives you guaranteed precision. So if you call sign on one device, you know it will give you the same accuracy as sign on another device. And this was really new with OpenCL. Before OpenCL, you get different results on different GPUs. Now with OpenCL, for at least for these library calls, you'll get the same results on all devices. And it's an open standard. And what that basically means is that anybody can implement it, but in order to be certified, you have to pay a fair amount to the organizing body, Kronos, in order to get your certification recognized. So Open Standard 2008 had good industry support, and it was actually driving hardware requirements at that point. The features that were required for OpenCL were starting to push into how people were designing GPUs. So here we are in 2008. OpenCL first came out. These were the companies that were on board with it. And if you look at this, you see the expected players, Intel, NVIDIA, and AMD in there. But you also see a bunch of other players. So Ericsson, Nokia, ARM, I guess Nokia is still in business, Freescale, Texas Instruments. These are companies that make embedded devices. So they were interested in OpenCL because they wanted a way for people to program the GPUs on, say, cell phones in order to get better power efficiency. Now, if we move forwards a few years, here's 2010, what the industry support looks like. All those people who were there in the first place are now in this box here, and all these other companies are starting to get serious about this and starting to use this technology. So the open nature of this, the fact that it worked on multiple platforms, really got a lot of people excited. Another way to look at this is what the implementation status is in 2014. So if you look over here, here's when OpenCL 1.0 came out in May 2009. Apple and, A and NVIDIA both had releases of it then. AMD came out a little better. Then IBM had one for the cell processor. You move forwards and more people start getting involved. NVIDIA moves up to 1.1. Intel comes out with support. Moving forwards, new versions being supported as well. Plus, all these other manufacturers are getting in there. So ARM starts supporting it for their GPUs. Imagination and Qualcomm start supporting it for their embedded GPUs as well. And a bunch of other players are getting in there as well. Here we've got an FPGA that's supporting OpenCL all the way here in 2013. So you can see it takes a while from when a standard comes out into when it's actually starting to be implemented but OpenCL has a huge amount of momentum and a lot of people are working on this. So a big question a lot of people ask is, well, what about OpenCL versus CUDA? And I'll be honest with you, CUDA has better tools, it's a better language, it has better features. I mean, NVIDIA works on this, they do whatever they want, and they've just pushed it further ahead. However, OpenCL supports more devices. CUDA is great as long as you only want to use NVIDIA GPUs doesn't work so well on anybody else's GPUs. In fact, it doesn't work at all on other people's GPUs. But the thing to keep in mind is they're basically the same here. These languages expose the architecture of a GPU. They strongly reflect this GPU architecture. And if you can figure out how to make your algorithm work well on one of these languages, it'll work well on the other. They're both slowly evolving. 
So, and uh, CUDA is evolving much faster because NVIDIA doesn't have to ask anybody when they make changes. OpenCL is evolving much more slowly because it's an open standard, so they have to get all the companies on board, but they are evolving to get better and better and have more features. So let's look at some questions here. Which one of these should you choose? So, should you choose CUDA or OpenCL for a personal project? Well, for a personal project, I definitely go with CUDA. CUDA has better tools, better debuggers, better integration. It's a more fun language. How about if you need performance at all costs? Well, here I'd also go for CUDA again. And the reason to go for CUDA is it's still got better tools and slightly better optimizations. What if you're producing a professional product? That is something you're going to need to sell and support for many years and get a lot of customers to use. Well, here things change a little bit. I wouldn't go with CUDA. i go with OpenCL on this one. And the reason for that is that OpenCL is your only way to support GPUs that aren't NVIDIA's GPUs. So if you want to run a mobile device, you're going to have to get rid of all your CUDA code and move it to OpenCL unless you happen to be running on a mobile NVIDIA processor. Also, in the long run, OpenCL may be around a lot longer because it is an open standard and has so many companies behind it. CUDA really only has one company behind it, so there's a lot less reason to believe this is going to be around in 20 years. How about for this course? Well, for this course, you might want to use CUDA because the tools are better. It'll be easier for you to write your code. But you might want to use OpenCL because if you write OpenCL code, you can use the same code on the CPU and the GPU. It's easier to use all the computing resources. Whereas with CUDA, you're going to have to write code for the GPU, and then you're going to have to write OpenMP code for the CPU. So you might want to use one or the other here. I'm not going to tell you which one is best. 